Hello, everybody. You are listening to 107.7 FM New Orleans. This is Friday, November the 3rd, and you are now listening to What the Frick Live. I'm your host, Emily uh, Men's House, and I have Will Martinez with me from Dark Friends Radio. What's going on, Will? Hey, good evening, Emily. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. I cannot Ooh. believe October's over with. October's over. The whole paranormal, like, uh, like now the hangover is over now, you know? That's oh, sad, isn't it? I know it is. But now we're into mop month. So <laughs> November. It, 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 here, here's something, though, that we can keep in mind while we're talking about moth, uh, yeah. moth, mob month. Is that mm -hmm. you know I've gone to a lot of paranormal uh, locations that mm -hmm. mobsters. We get oh mobsters, yeah, you know especially Al Capone. Al Capone's been everywhere. Al Capone, Dillinger. I mean, you name it. I mean, there's all those places where you know that energy is like imprinted in that you know in that area, and there's really nothing you can do about it. I mean, it's there forever, you know. Well, and then also too, didn't Al Capone? Didn't he say he saw ghosts too a lot of times? Oh. When he's spiritually connected on we're uh, we're not gonna talk about Al Capone that much tonight. We no. might bring him up momentarily because we're gonna talk yeah. about a group that's hardly ever talked about, which actually they should be talked about a lot more. But oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. but Al Capone, wasn't he like didn't he talk about seeing ghosts? Yeah, but then I don't know. It was probably time at the end where he had syphilis too, so he was kind of going crazy. So you know, he's <laughs> probably seen a bunch syphilis. of shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the guards. You know. So that's what the guards are saying. At that's what they say. Hey, you know, yeah. You know, <laughs> you know back in those days, it, it, it could have been, and it does make you delusional. I mean, and, that's and what they say. I don't know. I don't have first UT, knowledge UTIs, of that. UTIs, UTIs oh, do. Well, like when a crazy guy would come into, or a female would come into the ER or urgent care when I worked that, mm, uh, the right. very first thing we would do would get do a UTI. And I'm so sorry, oh. everybody. <laughs> Listen. We got it to a whole different like yeah genre here all of a sudden, but no. <laughs> anyway, uh, Will has a show, Dark Fringe Radio. If you don't mind, Will, tell everybody what's going on over there. Yeah, no, just uh, we took a break. Uh, we're actually recording a new episode tomorrow, uh, so just to give a little sneak peek, we're going to be talking about very infamous women in history. So um, mm. that's all I'm going to say, and that's it. <laughs> so infamous. look out for it. Infamous, infamous, yeah, like just wild, but. Check. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Keep going. Yeah. Frog, fraudsters. <laughs> Check. <laughs> yeah. Keep going. <laughs> Traffickers. Yeah, we got some of that too. Heidi Fleiss. We got some oh, Heidi Fleiss I mean, going it's on. It's just wildness. But anyways, yeah. Check it out. Darkfringeradio.com. Uh, we'll have a new episode next week for you guys. But uh, yeah. Well, uh, you can check out all our old stuff and uh, make sure you go to darkfringetrader.com for all that stuff. Awesome. Thank well, you. Anyway, we are streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, mm -hmm. Twitch, Twitter, and Rumble. If you're watching via YouTube and Rumble, please give us a thumbs up. Share the video please. out on all Thank social you. media. And yes. subscribe, su subscribe to the uh, page there. I hardly ever advertise for that, but I'm going to have to start doing that now. No, I'm going to grow to. some of these. Grow well, we, we do great on the radio and we love you all by the way in new orleans nolens uh one right. point seven, and we appreciate you all very very much and in thanksgiving month we're keeping mm -hmm. it in the family with the mob that's right and, we, and we're very thankful for everybody that supports the show and we appreciate you all but tonight we have a guest coming on his name is wayne klingman a dedicated history enthusiast has a profound interest in both conventional and school taught history and his concealed narratives yeah, everything is a super secret. Um, <laughs> like, it, like this um, Milwaukee stuff is super secret. He well, holds the uh, title. Oh, yeah, ahead, it, it, no, I'm just saying real quick. I mean, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but no, like, you're good. Since it's out of the like out of the sight, it's Milwaukee. People really right. don't think about that area. Well, who thinks yeah. about Milwaukee, Wisconsin as a place for mob, mob? You know what I mean? Like, think about it. It's like the like, mob's supposed to stop at Chicago. <laughs> it's supposed it's to, but supposed they have a tie. Okay. They have a tie to Chicago, so it's, it's really interesting. So, so yeah. a pro uh, producer, he's written a plethora of books. He's actually mm -hmm. sent me three of his books. I'm super excited. Oh, that's awesome! Look at that. Collection. Yes, and also he's done a lot of things with Buffalo Mob, which oh, you know, you know the Buffalo Mob, John oh, yeah. Walsh, John Walsh. Yeah. In my uh -oh. conspiracies with him, we so go. we're gonna have to probably bring <laughs> Wayne back on with uh, with Buffalo. But I'm gonna bring him on right now. I'm not gonna waste any more time here. We're gonna bring Wayne Klingman on the show. Thank you so much, Wayne. Oh, Jameer, thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you, well, Wayne. We, thank you. And also, I just want to say this to everybody with his book. Look at like, that. They're really nice. No, they're really well done. Yeah. 
the yeah. front, the back. Makes these you want to really read it. Really nice book. Yeah, thank you. I uh, passed that word along. You've worked mm -hmm. really hard on these. We have. I mean, it's a team effort. Yeah. And um, so we appreciate that. And and uh, real quick, um, did I miss anything? <laughs> I was introducing you. <laughs> no. Um, I throwing it, I just throwing stuff out there. But I wrote a bunch of books. There's more out there. Uh, some do better than others. I live in an old hold historically relevant house. I had a bunch of cats, a bunch of dogs. <laughs> There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. It's beautiful. Right well, you've there. also written a book about That's UFOs. Right. The UFO uh -oh. cult, too. So UFO he does cults. a little bit of UFO stuff. So, exactly. Wayne, I see a part two, I... possible part three in the future. That's yeah, that's crazy. definitely up my alley. UFO cults are crazy and only going to get crazier. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, it's going to hey, get Eddie. crazy. Peace oh, out, Eddie's Eddie. signed in. Hi, Eddie. Dean's here. Hey, Dean. Hey, Dean. Good Dean. to see you. Robert Dr. White. Bertram, I should say. Yeah, Dr. Bertram <laughs> in the house. That's right. Oh. <laughs> um, good morning from, from down right. under Robert White. Nice. I've seen you in a long time. I need to message from you. Australia. Good to see you, Robert. Nice. Thank you for showing in. Good if anybody's you. watching this, please share this out. Ask questions. More comments that you make. Keep this in the algorithm. We appreciate everybody. Um, so really mm -hmm. quick, Wayne. Um, what got you started in, in, I mean, I've sure. loved Godfather since I was a child, a kid. <laughs> I always told my mom I was going to marry a man that his last name was going to end in a vowel. There you go. Oh, and I, I've loved that. So what got you into researching these groups of people and, and writing these books? Sure. Uh, first, let me tell you, I'm going to drop the end of my last name. So my last name now ends with a vowel. Kling Ma. Okay. Yeah. Kling so you should get used to saying that name, okay? <laughs> there we go. Um, what I was interested in doing a book of the mafia mm -hmm. is my mother passed, and I got a small inheritance, and I wanted to do something with it, do a movie. I wanted to do a movie badly. And we had a choice between, we talked about doing some of the Jeffrey Dahmer, but in this area of Wisconsin, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting Jeffrey Dahmer. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you this much. It's an interesting person. In my opinion, he's a crazy guy. We'll never understand there is to know about him. There's a lot of myths, truths about him, what happened with him. I thought doing something the mafia would be something far more interesting. So that's what we did. So we did the movie. And then doing the movie, we got a bunch of information back from the FBI using the Freedom of Information Act. And we had enough to do a book. So that became the first book. And the rest is history. Mm. Yeah. Frank's a crazy guy. Oh, yeah. Mr. B. Mr. B. Francis B. Yeah. Yeah. And he had a, he had a, he had connections to the Chicago mafia. That's right. He did. In fact, he worked closely with them. In fact, they probably saved his life on more than one occasion because uh -huh. he didn't get along with Kansas City mafia. Right. And um, because he knew and got along really, really well with a man by the name of Milwaukee Phil. Mm -hmm. uh, Milwaukee Phil protected oh, him. Tony Akano protected a hit him. Man. Mm -hmm. Yes, Milwaukee Phil killed people beyond the grave. Mm -hmm. He oh, had yeah. the fancy car. He didn't have a fancy car. He had with the killer compartments and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. I remember I, I didn't write anything like that down, but I remember Milwaukee Phil because he had the license plate that flipped. Yeah. When they and he had smoke. Like this guy was a genius. Um that I didn't know smart. we talked about this, but um <laughs> yeah. yeah, he had the getaway car. The uh, hitman. Yeah, yeah, right. They called it. They called it something. The hit. Yeah. It was like the hit car or something. They had it's a. Nickname. I heard it called the hit car. And then idea, he was pulled over a traffic stop. They pulled it over. They discovered the plates and all that sort of stuff. Right. They took the car away. Now Milwaukee Phil would die in prison. Most people die in prison or get killed. Mm -hmm. One of the two. They usually don't mm -hmm. die in bed, um, or in the hospital bed. Frank did that only because he spent a significant time before he died in prison. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, Frank is an interesting character, interesting case study. Frank yeah. goes, goes to show if you have no scruples you can, and know the people, you can accomplish quite a bit of things. Excuse oh, me. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, with yeah. Milwaukee Mob, why Milwaukee? I mean, it, their area in Milwaukee wasn't that big. Yeah. They're not too big. Yeah. Because like, it was, it, was, it was a port city. Like, it's a two mile radius. Or something, wasn't it? 
He was, I mean, Frank had business interests in Milwaukee, Rockford, Chicago. That's why they called him Mr. Big, because he was so small. Okay. Um, Las Did you Vegas? Hear that? It's cutting in and out. I didn't finish that, that last part. I didn't come out. I heard you say they called him Mr. Big because he was small. Is what I heard. Because the area was small. Is that they why? Because some Mr. of them are, are like real smart aleck with their nicknames. You get what I'm they saying? They call him Mr. Big because he was a um, guy with a very self-centered sense okay. of importance. And he didn't mm -hmm. like being made fun of. Mm -hmm. he, he got angry quickly. And you okay. didn't want to make him angry. You did not want okay. to make him angry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make it, yeah, making him Frank angry is not the thing to do. So, Wayne, let's talk about this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to piggyback on what Emily was saying earlier. So we're talking about um, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. What are they? What are they controlling from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, to be able to be, you know, involved in this and you know, be able to pay back and sure. you know, do the kickback like they're supposed to? And vending bars. machines. Oh, vending, vending machines. machines. Okay. Bars were mm -hmm. the two big things. Frank had interest in at least three bars that I'm aware of. At the mm -hmm. time, he only had one bar. He had three or four of them under his control. Um, he had the vending machines. Mm -hmm. He's a he was never arrested nor convicted of hijacking, mm -hmm. but at the time he was big in Milwaukee, we had a warehouse of grocery stores for grocery stores in the area. And many mm -hmm. times your trucks would be knocked over, and how 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 nice it would be to be able to find something falling off your truck that you <laughs> put in your vending machines, right? Mm -hmm. Cigarettes, mm -hmm. candy bars. I mean, people don't think there's money in candy bars. There's a lot of money in candy oh, bars. Oh, yeah. Of That's course. Especially going to pay for them. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And he had, he had run hookers. Wow. Um, yeah, Frank was a busy guy. Uh, Vegas was very good for him. Mm. Well, didn't they duplicate money and stuff back then, too? Like a lot of the coins out knowledge, of Milwaukee? To my knowledge, he was not involved in counterfeiting. No? To my best of my knowledge. Doesn't mean he wasn't. That means best of my knowledge. He was not. Um, and that to me, I mean, God, I mean, vending machines alone was making him a lot of money. Mm -hmm. he, you had to hit Frank's vending machines. Frank was a, such a recognized expert with him vending machines. The five families in New York went to him for advice. Frank was so important in the realm of the mafia, especially when it came to Vegas, that mm -hmm. he almost got a seat in the commission. If mm -hmm. it wasn't for the fact he was going to be indicted for the straw man um, cases, he would have had a seat in the commission. That's mm -hmm. how big and powerful one guy was out of Milwaukee, of all places. Right, right. You know, yeah. Thought, oh, go ahead, Will. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, so now we're talking about like, you know, what is going on <clears throat> um, between Milwaukee and Vegas. So he's got he's got control of all this stuff. He's doing all this stuff, right? But there's a pretty interesting reason why he ends up in in jail. I mean, I don't want to get into that yet, but when he got into power, it was kind of like a different. There's a there's a there's a conspiracy theory saying that he wasn't supposed to be put into power, and some people say yes, he was supposed to put into power. He, he, what he happened there? Boss, sure, he married his boss's daughter. Okay, and that came on the leg in the door, mm. and that's when the Chicago came and said we like the guy. Kansas City didn't like him, but hey, mm. it's Kansas City, right? Right, right. So, so you're gonna go against the you can go against Frank. But then he's going to bring his friends in Chicago. His friends mm -hmm. in Chicago don't play. Mm -hmm. and, and it would have been a bad war between Kansas City, Milwaukee, and uh, Chicago. I mean, where did Frank play. come from, though, Wayne? Where did he come from? Did he, he came did, from Milwaukee? He was born. Yeah, in, I mean, he was raised. Did he, was he like mixed in with the mob or, or, or did he have family? Involved. His in father it? Was I believe was involved in the mob in a small area. His father-in-law definitely was involved in the mob. He had cousins. An uncle went to the West Coast. I believe he was involved in the Los Angeles mafia. Though look at these little M when it comes to the Los Angeles mob. I mean, he was well connected in organized crime. He knew what he was doing. He knew he knew what he wanted to do. He knew the steps he had to do to get there. So he did them. Every step he had a plan. I mean, he went out of his way. Interesting thing too about Milwaukee is law enforcement at the time of the 60s was way more worried about protesting than they were about the mafia. Because if I was walking to one of Frank's bars 
I can go out there, have a drink, have two drinks, play pool, go home, no one's going to bother me. If I got to his card games and play a little bit of cards, I can get home with my winnings, no one's going to bother me. The riots in Milwaukee, well, not so much. The riots in Milwaukee were burning down buildings, were shooting people. One of the guns farms found in the death of two FBI agents in um, Pine Ridge came from Milwaukee. They found one of the guns from Pine Ridge in Milwaukee. Back at law enforcement, both local, state, and the FBI, very, very focused on that element Milwaukee. They could care less about the mafia. No, I, I, for most of that time, things would change with Vegas. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, Will. I'm trying to pull up a picture of Frank. So if anybody's watching here, I'm trying to pull that up right now. Uh, Frank was an interesting guy. I mean, his sons were involved. I mean, Frank's big claim to fame is he put together Ellen Glick with the Teamsters, which started Argent, which again, again Argent bought three casinos. You know, that's where Frank made a lot of money, a lot of money in those casinos. So did a lot of most of the mafia. We just got a casino for the first time in my town. Do I need to look out for these dudes? No, no. <laughs> do you think the mafia still exists? Like they still do. They do online stuff. Oh, Will's muted. There we go. Yeah, well, Sorry about that. Oh, that's but okay. yeah, I was going to ask the same thing, Emily. You were you're right on the button on that. Mm -hmm. Is that, do you think the mafia is still involved in all these casinos now, or no? Is it more? They're not. Yeah. Are they involved in casinos per se as a control interest? Probably not. Right. Are they involved in the casino industry? Probably yes. Right. Things that they're doing. Here you go. Back in the day, my, when I was at your guys' age, you can't get, you cannot get, they were getting, putting people away in the mafia for charging 30% for user interest rates, right? Mm -hmm. Now you can go to the local check the cash business, right? Or the car title loans. And if you don't pay back that loan, if you don't pay back for a year, you're paying over a thousand percent interest. That's legal. Right. Right. If I want to gamble, I I can go online. I can, and they're not involved in those gambling outfits they're not at all. Right. Mm -hmm. They can go online, I can gamble. I can mm -hmm. drive to Chicago, which is 40 minutes from here. I can do a sports book. I can gamble all day all night. 45 minutes from away here, I can live in a new casino if I want to. I can gamble mm -hmm. all day and all night. So no. you're saying they they become more sophisticated, basically. They've got I'm saying they're not out of that business per se. They're doing other things. Right. They're right. doing Ponzi schemes. Well, that's well, so does BM. So does um, that guy that has got nailed for seven counts for doing crypto. Yeah. Um, Sam Bankman free. Oh, right, yeah, Bank. but they're doing things. Things to help things. I can't speak for all the mafia families, but things right. I can speak about is Buffalo's big on healthcare fraud. They're big on mm -hmm. social security fraud. Oh, mm -hmm. um, something. they're um, this alleged involved in that two billion dollar casino that those bills being made for them. And that's all there is. Mm -hmm. Why would you build a two billion dollar casino uh, stadium and not having safeguards right against organized crime? Because you know, organized crime was big in New York in the building trade. What's to say that that's big in building trades now? But there's mm -hmm. no safeguards. Are they looking purposely the other way? It doesn't make any sense. Mm. But hey, I'm not in New York. What do I know? Um, <laughs> it's just crazy. I mean, the well, thing that we... Oh, go ahead. You were cut out again. I'm so sorry. Don't worry about it, man. Um, the things that the Milwaukee, the mafia was involved with in the 60s and 70s that put them in jail are now legal. The things that they're illegal involved in now, it's harder to put them in jail. But they don't get much time for them. Are ones we should be more concerned about because healthcare fraud is costing us billions of dollars a year. Health insurance fraud it's cost us billions of dollars a year. That's money that costs me money, costs you money, costs everybody money. But you get mm -hmm. nailed for somebody for it. You don't get what six months, maybe, maybe. Right, exactly. No, but that's stupid. They don't. They, we could talk about how Detroit <laughs> can involve the healthcare fraud, but that's a subject off a lot off air. But it's an interesting subject. I mean, mm. unions in the day was big in the mob. Union, um, that situation was huge. Are they involved still in union businesses? Some one people would claim yes, they are. I don't, um, and sometimes the unions have been nailed for being mm -hmm. controlled by unions because federal government now takes that damn seriously as they should. Oh, yeah, again, it affects people like me and you and everybody else. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's crazy stuff. Absolutely crazy stuff. Real quick, I had an alert a day or two ago about Jimmy Hoffa. Real quick. They said <laughs> they, said they found him, they right? Believe that they found Jimmy Hoffa's finally in Fli the Mil 55 Mil years later. Milwaukee County Stadium. <laughs> Milwaukee County Stadium. No. Right. No. Jimmy Hoffa well, it, it's at was the home killed plate in Detroit. Or, something, or, or the original no. home plate. No. Jimmy Hoffa was killed in Detroit. I think, it's, I think it is. No, no, no. I think they found him. I think they found him. Then was killed. The mafia in Detroit had crematoriums they controlled, mm -hmm. car junkyards they controlled. They cremated the body, pulverized it, and put it in a lake or put it in little car bodies. Jimmy Hoffa's body will never be found. That's never, right. never, never. But That's you right. can't go wrong with doing two things. You don't go wrong writing a book about Jimmy Hoffa with JFK assassination. Oh, basically. well, listen, yeah, of course. You see that all the time. Another thing that's really interesting about this whole, you know, I guess, you know, you want to call it a novella of this guy's life, Peter B, or, you know, Mr. B, let's just say, uh, you know, the way he got pinched at the end with his sons, it was through a very infamous or famous or whatever you want to call it, uh, detective who was on another case as well. Tell us a little bit about that. A lot of people may not know about that. Well, uh, you mean the Starman indictments? Yeah, where where uh, Pistone was involved. Well, see, Pistone was involved in trying to net so much of that. He came to Milwaukee to make a deal with Frank for vending mm -hmm. machines. They're getting right. for extortion, right? Right, right. Frank did not trust for stone. Frank thought he was the Fed. So mm -hmm. he went away, he went back home. He Frank uh Bastone thought he was gonna be killed. He thought he was dying in the city of Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. He thought the gig was up. But was this I'm sorry, I read Joe Fox's comment. Joe Joe Fox is on here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell Joe Fox not to start his car for the next couple of days. There you go. <laughs> well, I bring up Jimmy Hoffa and I get booted out of this out of out of here. So yeah. they're, watching. they're watching. They're yeah. <laughs> watching. <laughs> In any event, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. I apologize. That's okay. No, 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 you're good. Oh, uh, you're good. It's, so the skin goes down, right? Right. Um the skin gets busted out. That's why he that, that's why Frank goes to jail. So the skim to give him a little bit of extra time for the extortion, right? But right. the thing that we have about the skim is Argent, um, Ellen Glick gets introduced to Mr. B, right? Right. Ellen Glick is by that time a millionaire. He's a millionaire building contractor from California. Mm -hmm. He's introduced to a man he doesn't really know who's going to mm -hmm. help him get loans to start something in Vegas. I don't know about you, uh, me, if I'm going to help somebody, if somebody's going to help me borrow millions of dollars, I'm going to find out a little bit about, about, about him. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that you call the local chamber cameras. Maybe the local police department. I know. Maybe the Calif maybe the Nevada Gaming Commission and say, hey, we know about this guy. That you would get told, well, we think it's part of the mafia. You think that conversation <laughs> would have taken place, but it didn't take place, did it? Mm -hmm. I, in my opinion, and we're working on getting the Freedom of Information Act from the FBI about Glick. Um, in my opinion, I think Glick was like Lefty Rosenthal, was an FBI informant. Mm. You know, but you know, we need the records to prove that. And so I'm only alleging this might be the case. We don't know for mm. sure. Mm. It seems pretty I, I and nobody can tell me for sure how Mr. B meets Glick. I've heard two different stories. I don't know when if any of them are true or if any of them are true, right? But somehow that introduction took place. Right? And they say they, they he met him at the Stardust, right? Supposedly, no, one... supposedly it's one of his sons with the school's click. Oh, okay, supposedly. okay, but that's been that's, that's in dispute. Okay, another another source claims that they were introduced by a third party. Which, what does that somebody, mean? Yeah, what does that mean? You know, yeah, right, it goes yeah. Like, third party, you know, yeah, third party <laughs> unknown, but it, it goes to show. I'm sorry <laughs> if I'm going to be in the hook for a loan. <laughs> That mm -hmm. you help me set me up. I'm going to find out some more information. I am. I'm oh, absolutely. Say, Let me sign here. Hundred percent. A loan or a loan, like a third party alone, like they can't identify what. A third party for the introduction, right? 
Mm-hmm. Uh, who did you click to our guy, Mr. B? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because somehow they met. Mm-hmm. And supposedly he met because him one of Peter's sons went to school with Glick supposedly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. A, but that's been kind of sort of disproven. But somehow they met. Mm-hmm. And they're good enough friends where Glick would trust Mr. B to introduce him to teachers and write him that big check. Right. Of course, now we can throw in the Mormon church with this one too, LDS, which is really interesting oh, LDS. as well. LDS. Oh, yeah. And the LDS. Man, that's a whole other show. <coughs> that's Maybe Utah. Two. Ooh, that's all of Utah. Well, see, it, it, how, how the LDS become involved is the LDS ran the banks in Nevada and mm-hmm. the special Las Vegas. That's right. And the interesting thing about that is the bankers made a lot of money in loan loan fees, right? Millions and millions of worth of dollars. I don't know about you. I have a lot of change. But now there's something called you have to know customers. A bank has to know who you are before they do a certain amount of business with you. Mm-hmm. Both laws did not exist in the 50s and 60s. So they did not. But if I'm a banker, I'm getting all these money coming in, and these people are bringing it to me to say, hey, we have what are you going to say? Yeah. I mean, you can do, but you can sit there and say, gee, thank you very much, mister. Right. What's your name again? <laughs> yeah, get, they were actually working with the teachers that we know. But it seems there's also working with known mafia also. Mm-hmm. You think this would come up conversation? Mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean, we don't. I mean, well, I'm, I'm sure you could talk about baseball and football all day. Mm-hmm. You could talk about your your, your uh, playing slots if you wanted to. But somehow you think, hey, by the way, thank you very much for that loan. I really, really appreciate it. My grandmother ran numbers back in Connecticut. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that's not something I'm like 100 percent proud of, but I mean, you know, she I did it. Be. You know, yeah, I mean, that's what she did. I mean, and you know, it and was a way to make a this, living. It was. I mean, Steve Wynn made a fortune running numbers. It's yeah. actually more his father than Wynn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, this numbers. There's nothing wrong with numbers running. It was a big racket yeah. in Chicago. Oh yeah, it's big racket. Was especially with an African commu- African American community. Absolutely, it's and also in the Hispanic, uh, absolutely. Well. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. Uh, I and you're talking when you write my book about use of um root magic, of gamble. course. Yes, right. You yeah. know, I mean, we oh god, see, I got my dice, I got my dice of power. <laughs> <laughs> like he's ready. <laughs> now, I mean, I, these dice come from the Tropicana, which is a uh, casino, right. Mm-hmm. I got another dice from the Hacienda, which is a mob up casino. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I got chips from all the Mobbed up casinos, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a big collector. Um, oh, I'm yeah. gonna put I'm gonna put these chips in a in a mojo bag because mm-hmm. I need that power. Hey, Wayne, you know that's like I mean now you're you're kind of creeping over to the paranormal side now with the the, tr- the trigger objects and like now you got these objects that have these powers and stuff like yeah. that. Now now you're getting more into like my side now here now you know it, that's interesting because you know. A lot of people believe that, you know, when, especially when they go to Las Vegas, you know, yeah. you know, they believe in numerology. They believe in, you know, things that have power, you know, they Absolutely. believe in all that stuff. You know what I mean? And, and the thing is that so, and also a lot of people are very, very superstitious. These very are superstitious. Oh, Absolutely. they are. Yeah. These yeah. are both with garlic because they, if the lead didn't kill you, the garlic would, right? That's right. <laughs> I mean, they didn't play. I mean, they did not play. I mean, they were, I mean, there's reason mm-hmm. why superstitions exist. They mm-hmm. exist because some aspect of it for someone or people over time, mm-hmm. you know, in Christ. Um, mm-hmm. I'm sorry if I swore, I apologize for that. No, 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 but I have. Oh, look, uh, my miraculous metal, I have my saint medals, mm-hmm. I have the saint of gambling, mm-hmm. and um, what? Had... hold on, tell me, say that again, sure. Fine. What do you have? I have the miraculous metal. Miraculous metal. metal. Right. The miraculous metal. Yes. Right. What is that? I don't know what that is. Like to explain it well, please. <laughs> I mean, that's like a like a cath a Catholic like yeah. uh like uh like you know almost like Saint Christopher's no like Rosary? Saint Christopher's like no. you know oh. or Saint Michael's like you know something like that. I mean, it's like it's something to that significance. I mean, yeah, I'm Rosary. not. Yeah, absolutely. The idea is that this nun um, was visited by Mary, who told her how to make this metal, right? Um, 
and the metal is made. It's made, I think, in the 1800s or early 1900s. I'm sure exact dates. Right. And, and he's supposed to wear it on your neck. Mm-hmm. And he's supposed okay. to get graces, right? One okay. of the graces that's supposed to receive is he will not die well the administrations of Mary and our Saint Joseph. I have the Saint of Gambling, the Saint Metal on my neck, right? Mm-hmm. This guy mm-hmm. knows I need all the luck I can get, right? Mm-hmm. I can't think I should know. It's not um Wait, you said the Saint of Gambling? Gambling, yeah. Who I think it's a saint. Okay. Um I've never heard of this. I'm sorry, Wayne. Oh, yeah. I've never heard of this. You know, so I'm learning not, something I, I, new. I, I, if you can drop your, if I'm gonna drop the last letter of my name, so it end, ends with an A, mm. right? You gotta get in board. You or you can you can add an E and it can be I, silent. I, I, <laughs> like Miss, my last name's E. All right, whatever, whatever, whatever floats your boat, whatever works for you. I'm easy. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And what we'll do is we have to go to Vegas and spend time with El Cortez. You can get out more. You can get out more. I don't yeah. go anywhere. I'm a hermit in Kentucky. I'm a homebody. <laughs> No, and it's funny because like we're we're talking about this stuff. I was literally last night watching Peaky Blinders yeah, again. Yeah. Oh, another I love another, Peaky another show, and they were talking about he, and okay, this was at the beginning of the of the season of the very first season, and he becomes like he he gets all this like illegal, you know, prop, you know, like uh, guns and ammo that was supposed to go somewhere else, and he's like, I'm not going to move it under a full moon. Yeah. I'll move it after a full moon. We don't move. We don't move stuff. We don't move stuff during a full moon. We do it after a full moon. And he said that. And he said that in the episode. I was like, "Oh, that's that gypsy stuff. They believe in that thing." Yeah, you know, so, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's funny because that bleeds over into everything else, like the Italians, you know, the, the Irish, the, you know, everywhere. I mean, they all believe in all that stuff. It's the same thing. You know, you get the toilet in that thing, right? Right. I have Florida water. Oh, Florida I got water. that. I know what I I've know heard what that of Florida is. Florida water. Oh yeah. I have the secret Hoyt's cologne. Oh yeah. I know yeah. all about that. <laughs> okay. My, Will's my guy. Will's like on the Vegas. So are you? So are you superstitious? <laughs> is that what you're saying, Wayne? No, I'm not superstitious. I wouldn't call it superstitious. <clears throat> he okay. just goes with by what works. <laughs> I mean, I just throw rings. I mean, I, I, I mean, I mean, if he got rid of all that, what would happen to Wayne? <laughs> like, <laughs> if I got rid of my Saint Smell, I'd Nothing. be all right. Just, <laughs> I'd be all right. I, I, yeah. I once my necklace broke that wore my chain, my stuff on, oh, no. mm-hmm. and it broke. And um, I found a couple of days later in an interesting place, but I looked for it hard because I it means something to me, right? I might be of silly, course. I might be superstitious, but it means something to me, right? Mm-hmm. Well, what Just do you like think about? Bo- oh, go ahead, Wayne. Go ahead. No, like I'm a mojo. I make a mojo by for a reason because it works. It gets, if all it does is give me the confidence to do something, that's right. You know, I mean, confidence is huge. What gives you the mm-hmm. confidence? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The power of words, the power of intent. Oh, that's power really. of words and exclamation yeah. yeah. and stuff. That's There's all power. that. That's what all that you is. Speak really, things into existence. That's like, you right. can't. Okay, you can't. And the same thing when it when I, and you can also. Do things with it. If I was going to be mad at someone and be really, really upset, I wanted mm-hmm. to screw with them. I would take away their luck. I can do that. I luck. Can, I can, luck. L O L U C K. Oh, L U C K. Okay. okay. I can give people hangovers. That's an easy thing to do too. Mm. I can give people horrific nightmares. You can't right? do that to me, Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? I was born on Friday the thirteenth. Oh. Okay. And you, I'm good. She you says she's, just, am, she's not susceptible good. to any of that stuff. I'm not. She thinks. She thinks. I'm not. Anything that's bad <laughs> is lucky to me. She thinks. <laughs> I mean, and again, I mean, the idea is these things seem to laugh at. They use it for a reason. Yeah, like, but they it, believed in all this stuff. There's a reason oh, for it. I mean, right? Well, why well do, there's, there's also a belief easy? in expectancy. If you believe in this and you're expecting it to happen, if this stuff happens, it's going to manifest. Yeah, I mean, why would you move something in the full moon with easier to be seen? You do it in the new moon, right? Right. Well, right. the moon's decreasing. When that it's waning. Yeah. Right, right, right. It, it, it makes sense. Right. You know, does right. garlic, permanent garlic, and the mob does. They move in shadows. Us, they have to. Mm-hmm. That's stupid. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's all these things happen for a reason. But here's, here's, they did it 
so much in shadows, I think now that they do it in plain sight. Absolutely. But we just we're just we're conditioned to not look for those things. Because everybody we, else is doing it in plain sight. That's why. Well, and also I think too, our mind I mean my mind goes to that a lot of this stuff happened. Well, I don't know if a lot of it happened. The hits. Uh, that's what I want to get to here in a minute with Milwaukee oh. mob, the the hits. But uh -huh. It, all, it seemed like these hits were orchestrated in the evening or night times a lot of a lot of the a lot of the times. But then you had the famous, you know, February fourteenth hit that happened. Massacre. Valentine's Day, yeah, massacre. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and things. So I don't know. I think maybe they operated so much in the dark that we've expected it over time to happen at nighttime or in the dark. And then when they finally switched and it started doing more in the daylight, we're not here to recognize that. Well, they're not going to quit killing people. They try not to now, at least not with gunfire. I mean, Frank's enemies tended to blow up in cars, mm -hmm. which meant oh, they blow up in cars when they started them up. You know, they're still doing that stuff. Yeah. Well, like the, the blowing up in cars. We even have yet. something here local. Well, that, whoever did that, it, it'll be caught because now they, <laughs> now they put chemical traces in dynamite. Yeah. And they can trace it back to the location that they stole it from, which allows them to find evidence. Ooh. Easier in a conviction, and you get convicted with simply stealing it. You go to prison for a very, very long time. Well, these oligarchs in all kinds of different mm. countries are blowing up their children in cars, like even out of oh, Russia. Russia. Like know, they, tend to blow up, they tend to blow people up in Russia, but Russia's not in the United States. Hey, did Putin die by the way? No, no Putin's not alive. <laughs> So I don't know. They keep saying he's dead. He's alive. He's, dying. Yeah, he, he's, he's not. He, he had a, so many. He collapsed. He didn't get up. He had a heart attack. I mean, I hear he's all this stuff. Thyroid cancer. You hear yeah. anything? You know, and why you can hear anything? Right. I heard. They push that on Russia's side anyway for propaganda. To be honest, to, right, to, to push get him it popular. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Just out. to push it out to make people think, oh, he's weak. He's all this stuff, but he's not that weak, and and he's. Probably has three uh, three people that look just like him. So if he does die, That's what they we'll say. never know. We'll never know. Because well, a Putin replacement double will step in his place. Well, people die weirdly in Russia now. They follow buildings a lot of times. Mm. Interesting how many rich people follow buildings in Moscow. Oh, yeah. Or get blown up in cars. Well, you know, yeah. we got America oligarchs too. So, <laughs> okay, I mean, I, I, think the last American got blown up I want to know if you know anything about the Clintons in the Chicago uh -oh. mob. <laughs> Look, I want to know. <laughs> yes, I, I I can do a song and dance in Clinton's Hugh, but not in Chicago and Little Rock. Hugh Rodman, Hillary's father, was a boss in Chicago. Not, I, or I don't think so. He no. might have been assistant, nobody talks not, about it. He worked out the Merchandise building. But nobody, but the mafia lineage in Chicago is easily traced. Right. It was about the Capone. It goes to. Uh, I'm writing a uh, book on it. Are you? I'm looking forward to it. I mean, there's all and kinds Bill of Clinton and how he used the Black Panthers to traffic his cocaine. Oh, everybody it knows goes, the CIA. Fast and Furious? CIA. Yeah, fast and Furious, the, that's, that's the, the gun the, trades. ATF. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, look at Mia, Arkansas. That's you know, an Ignacio Esteban right? question. Mm -hmm. You know, they're running drugs and they're running drugs and guns at an airport. How did the Bill Clinton not know? But right. look at Ark. I mean, if you look at Arkansas, with the Colonels. You got Brian Clyde. Mm -hmm. You got Dillinger. You got mm -hmm. um, Carpus. Mm -hmm. There, on the kidnapping and stuff, right? Then you got you got a gambling that makes Vegas at the time dim in comparison. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Arkansas was full of crime. Still is. No offense meant to people at Great State. But oh, again, yeah. it, it is what it is. It's embedded. It's already ingrained in that area, right? Same thing. I mean, here it is last during the pandemic. Right. I was told it was a roadhouse opened up south of Lake Geneva. Mm -hmm. What had gambling going on? They had um, a couple of blackjack tables, a craps table, and a couple of slot machines and hookers. If there I wanted go. to go, if I wanted to go to visit my place, that they could give me an address. But one thing, Mister Big here ain't gonna go. To visit a roadhouse outside of Chile. Of course not. No, it's never. He's right. going to be far away from that, right? Right, because it, I get emails all the time, and ninety nine point nine percent of them are stupid, silly things. Mm. Once in a while, like how the book and the uh, the Buffalo Mob came about, it's serious type stuff. Um, there's another story about Mexico. I can tell you off here sometime. 
but you know, you be careful. It's, it's, it's stupid to walk to some place where you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, so that's stay yeah. safe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of because we can't make oh, I want to, I want to know about the hits. Oh, okay. The, like hits, the, the hits top of ten, Mister <laughs> B. Like, what really landed him in jail? Too, we we need to talk about that a little bit, but. Well, I mean, jail was out, of, out of Milwaukee mob, what were their what was the hit count like? What three or really? four blowing them up? I mean, over time, probably more than that. But they killed the policemen, people of Chicago killed a cop in Kenosha, which is south of me, mm-hmm. and they took the body, some lights off, and did not rid of it. They kidnapped another guy from he was stealing from them, so they took him to his hop. Uh, another location where they slowly killed him to get their money back. I mean, typical mafia type stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, Kenosha, if you think Milwaukee was bad, Kenosha and violence was worse. But most of that stuff was due to alcohol, as in running it versus anything else. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking the same thing with Lake County, Illinois. Lake County, Illinois is probably one of the most corrupt counties in America. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah, that's it's what I've heard. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a, there's a Casino, in somebody's house was a casino, and the casino got burned down, right? Accidentally. And this ghost is still that lightning. They got that a lightning. Lightning. That insurance lightning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's also the ghost of the property still, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of so course. Supposed, I mean, <clears throat> Lake County is a bad, bad place. We had a smiley face killer yeah. that way. Mm-hmm. I mean, what Lake County, I'll use the word evil. Mm hmm. You know? What about Kentucky? Well, if they have you, that's all people like can handle. <laughs> yeah. As long as, I'm safe, as long as I'm with Emily, I'm safe. You're safe. <laughs> I'll protect you up here in the Appalachia. That's yeah. right. <laughs> I'll send you some same else, Will. That's right. Thank we, you. I, I don't go out at nighttime at all. I say we're going to go out. Yeah, I don't mess around. I don't say that you can go out. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah, know, so, <laughs> what landed uh, Mr. B? <laughs> In prison, what the skim. What actually, the what two skim trials, this getting busted for the Vegas skim, the skim, and Mr. B, and a bunch of other people in prison. Skim, the Vegas skim, skim. out the top, yeah. <gasps> this is I is can, this why Kim Kardashian has a brand no, called Skim? No, no Kim Kardashian is well, I can't use that word there. Um, <laughs> yeah, there was no sex tape with Mr. B, yeah. Let me tell you, no that. sex tape and sex with Mr. B. <laughs> Sex tapes in Buffalo. We just talked about yeah. Hey, hey. But you know, Jake Simpson. <laughs> right. That's so that show. We, but Mr. B, you know, Mr. B ran whores. And Mr. Mm-hmm. B liked his whores. In fact, if you remember the movie, the TV show Star Trek. Oh yeah. The girl that played uh, her out came to walk as a dancer. She met Mr. B and got in the next bus out of town. Oh. Because she would have nothing to do. With Mr. B and stupidity, she got out. Sometimes wow. people do not get out. One of the people that fought the mafia, who's in Mendale in Vegas, mm-hmm. was a man with the name of Ted Day. Mm-hmm. And then Day's claim to fame is used to be a pimp for Frank B. Gotcha. After his, after Ned's girlfriend was slaughtered by a, her one of her customers, and she's also a hooker with her child, Mr. B finished his journalism degree. Went to Vegas, got a job in the newspaper, and spent the rest of his life fighting the mafia as a newspaper reporter. Wow. Now, now Dad would die tragically, scuba <laughs> diving after a heart attack. Tragically. Oh, tragically. It's always heart a heart attack, attack or an overdose. Yeah. <laughs> a heart right. attack or overdose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And did, they, did some of the mafia kill him? Well, he pissed off a lot of people. Could he have? Died of a heart attack. Yes, he's a heavy smoker, heavy drinker. He was fat. These things mm-hmm. don't add up for good health reasons. Right. You know, underwater, you, they're not too wrong. Your tank's not right. Things happen, I would say. Absolutely. There's no doubt that, you know, that day went to went toe to with the mob. Mm-hmm. You know, and he then he well, he learned that from being a pimp for Frank. He went toe to with many people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's it's and the people in Milwaukee are not your typical brewer fans. People from Milwaukee, before we were emasculated, were men of, <laughs> were men of character. I won't call them men of character. Before you were what? Emasculated? 
Emancipate. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, we're men of character. We're men that stand mm -hmm. up men for the purpose. I mean, of course, principles. You know, say principles, right? Be it by right. the rock. Right. You know, things, things are done here. We're seeing this now happening. I live in a little city called Racine, Wisconsin, right? Mm -hmm. And my black I live within 100 feet of a school is a house full of pedophiles. Okay. Wow. According to Wisconsin state law, you can't be a pedophile and live within some some distance of a school, right? Right. However, it seems in Wisconsin, well, not all pedophiles are the same type of pedophiles. Now, what's going to happen? The more and more we have Hispanics come to the city with all their family values, because they do have strong family values, mm -hmm. what's going to happen is I expect that the pedophiles will be talked to. Oh, yeah. Well, two or three I, young men from Mexico would be convinced to move away. Well, when mm -hmm. I said about trafficking, I've done a lot of research on child trafficking. In Madison, Wisconsin, is the number one place in the United States for child trafficking. Today? Yes. I have to make a phone call. I want to check in that. Thank you. I like checking yep, that one. It is. I've done a lot of research on child trafficking. You would think it's Miami or DC or, or Los Angeles. No, Angela. it's going to be somewhere you don't even expect. Yeah, well, it's Madison, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Or Wisconsin, yeah. I mean, yeah. Especially other state helps, too. I mean, Madison, Wisconsin. And if you know who Jesse Sabotar is, she's been on the show a couple times. Will, I don't think you were with me mm -hmm. when we interviewed her. Um, she even talks about Madison, to being the number one location for child trafficking. So there's uh -huh. still still a lot of uh, stuff going on. I mentioned trafficking earlier. I didn't put the child in it. But... Um, but Back to Milwaukee, though, because that's something that nobody talks about. Like, I think when I sit and I've done recruiting and I've hired for truck drivers, I've done all kinds of positions um, uh, throughout the United States. But the only place like I recruit for it, um, in Wisconsin is Milwaukee. Or, um, so it's like the only only city in that state. And with Milwaukee in the mob is is that maybe possibly the reason that it, they picked it because when you when you think of i don't think of madison wisconsin i think of milwaukee so is that is that the reason why you think that they went there because they came no, they, from they, sicily right oh they came from italy yeah some from yeah. Italy, the mainland some of them from sicily depends but they they grew up there i mean they they were they grew up naturally. After their parents or grandparents showed up, they grew up in families. They that's what they learned. Some people became plumbers, some people became <clears throat> fail also. Plumbers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the thing too about Milwaukee is Milwaukee can't get away from its past fast enough. Right. All, all the places that Frank had interest in are gone, were torn right. down, quote mm -hmm. for redevelopment. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously to me. The mafia are some really evil people. And the Sopranos we need to remember is a TV show. Yeah. Uh, and the like of TV shows are dramas and for our entertainment. In real life, the mafia did some horrible, horrible things and still do to this day. Um, but we also need to remember our history. We can remember our history and say this is Frank and this is what some things he did around here. Mm -hmm. and remember that history and not have to worship it. There's a difference. You know, there's a difference to say that's how vending machine scams work. Yep. You know, that's how, how music industry scams work. This is mm -hmm. how prostitution works. This is how pimping works. Mm -hmm. You know, and things change over time. We if we don't remember our history, we tend to repeat it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wayne, one thing I want to ask real quick, uh, Emily, if you don't mind. No, um, go ahead. Have you seen the Tulsa King? Yeah, I love it. Great show. Yeah, great. it's a great show, right? Love, love that show. I hope there's I mean, reasons. What do you think of it? I mean, like, seriously, oh, like, you got oh, a guy that gets extradited out into Tulsa, Oklahoma. He's a he's an ex mafioso uh, okay. who, right. who basically covered for the family, didn't say anything, did his time, did 25 years incarcerated, gets out, gets extradited out to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and says, Hey, go ahead and make a living out there and we'll keep tabs on you. Well, I mean, what a crazy story, right? As a, you said it's, it's a story. It's a fun story. It right. has very little to do with the mafia. Right. How those things really work. But again, it's an entertaining story. 
and Sylvester Stallone does a really good, outstanding job being that mafioso guy. Yes. His interaction with the FBI agent, the girl, is mm -hmm. incredible. I it wish is. I was able to do the same thing when I get to be 75 years old, right? <laughs> I mean, that's just hilarious. All right? They, they do a good job in yeah. mixing the drama with the humor, right? right? Yes. And you have that girl who's kind of the flaky girl, but yes. the reasons why we find out she's kind of flaky, right. and the people who stand up and why they stand up. Mm -hmm. If you take nothing more than this from that show, is we all have the power to stand up for our beliefs and do things greater than we think be possible if we give ourselves the, the authorization to do it. I can do this. I just need to do it. I can write a book. I wrote my first book at 59. I mm -hmm. shouldn't, you know, but, but technology didn't exist for me to do it was much younger. Yes. Right? But why do you want to write a book? Write a book. If you want to write yeah. music, write music. Write you want music. To do whatever. Yeah, yeah. Do what you want to do, right? Right. Yeah. You know, there's nothing stacking you. Take mm -hmm. the power that you have as a human being and go for it. The people will help you. If mm -hmm. somebody's interested in writing a book, they can get a hold of me and say, hey, Wayne, hey, Mr. Big, I want to write a book. Mm -hmm. Hey, Mr. Big, I hear you doing a back documentary in the Vegas skim. Can I be part of it? Give me a call. We can talk. Right. You, know, right. you want to learn how to do a documentary? Well, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna talk to you about Chicago and Hugh Rodman and yeah. In merchandise I mean, building, uh -oh. which we know a lot of these mafia people come from the merchandise. We got Les Wexner, which I used to work for and work with in, out of Columbus, Ohio. Me and Les Wexner, this deals with Jeffrey Epstein in some ways too. But, but you know who owned the building uh -oh. that freaking Hugh Rodman was in? The Kennedys, right? Yeah, the Kennedys. Like this stuff, and it deals with the Sassoon families. And everything mm -hmm. and deals with bathhouse. Like this is I've I'm writing a book on, on it. I, I finally decided it's called um polit um oh hold on. I'm was speaking too fast. Um I was speaking too fast. I have I was uh, my title of the book I was writing. I can't even think about it. But, um in political lines, and the political lines was gonna be cocaine <laughs> yeah. on it. Um, but uh I, I I have about eight chapters written out um, with this and the study I've gone behind it because a lot of people don't know Hillary Clinton and her family and how they even changed their name, which a lot of these mafia people did change their name from what I've read. Yeah, they do. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Some don't, some do. Mm -hmm. It depends what they want to do. I mean, some people want to get away from it from the, because I have an Italian last name, people might think I'm in the mafia. I'm going to change my last name. Or my father went to jail for fifty thousand years. I'm gonna change my last name. He gets you know? nothing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I'll say this too. Back in the day, a lot of them came from Germany, and Germany had such a bad reputation from World War II, mm -hmm. and they changed their name to be sound more Jewish, more acceptable, and that's Rodman or Rodham. Um, it, it comes from that. So I don't even know Hillary's really actual name name <laughs> her birth i don't her uh, well her public her, record huh her birth certificate would be public record uh, possibly but these people change everything her birth certificate is like, for sure public record well i got conspiracies on birth certificates so i don't know if okay. i want to talk about that right now <laughs> but i got conspiracies on birth certificates uh, conspiracies on conspiracies <laughs> yeah I mean, I mean, we know a president. We know a president comes from Chicago, uh -oh. and and we know that he has his maternal grandfather that raised him in Hawaii is oh, also the second, okay. second second Sotero. cousin. He's the second cousin of George H. W. Bush. That's like, right. All of these people are all intertwined. It's high organized crime. The higher, the more. Intensive conspiracy means more people have to be involved, which means mm -hmm. more people who can talk. Mm -hmm. They change might... names. We got Barry Sotero, which is also a producer of Netflix, part owner okay. of Netflix. Um, so the more you, more of a pleasure conspiracy that you have, and the more people have to keep quiet, the harder it is to keep them quiet. That's right. Yeah, and so does that. But I mean, who knows what's going on? I mean, I think this whole is really fascinating. I'll just mm -hmm. tell you, people that start telling it out and try to post it out on social media, you get shadow banned or get your cousins <laughs> <laughs> Me, because <laughs> um, 
I will always speak it out. And if I'm wrong, then I respect somebody to message me and tell me I'm wrong and we'll talk about it because I'm not one of these people. This is it. And this is it. And, you know, um, so if somebody messages me and sees it, we can talk about it and see what's going on. But I think all of it, it an FBI has intertwined with the mafia for many, many decades. How can, how can we how can this not all come together? I see back in the day when Frank was running around. Yeah, I put an illegal wiretap in one of his places. Mm -hmm. And when Jagger found that out, they made him take it down and destroy all the records because it was illegal. You can't keep that evidence. They didn't get rid of it. And then with Whitey Bulger, he was working with the FBI. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, a, Bulger. Yeah, we have an FBI agent, not an FBI agent, we have a DA agent who's working with the Buffalo Mafia, a alleged mm -hmm. member of the Ma Ma Buffalo Mafia. Mm -hmm. he, likes, he likes to talk to his girls about being a member of the Mafia. Who knows? Uh, um, if he really is, and court trial will find that out. But, he is, but we have the agent was involved. We have a mm -hmm. in Buffalo. We have a judge back for their court. We had a judge and a Catholic priest commit suicide. Interesting. <laughs> Why? Well, yeah. Well, and and we got opium too during this time, and nobody wants to talk about Nancy Pelosi's father, <laughs> that was oh, yeah. the king of opium. And was entailed with the CIA and the FBI. And then finally, they released the records of her father. I think what his, his name was Frank or no, Thomas. Her dad's name's Thomas. They released the records finally of him. And I got the records. Guess what day they released the records? Oh, yeah. January 6th. Oh, January 6th. <laughs> oh. Okay. I mean, and then her daughter, her daughter was doing a documentary <laughs> and filming Nancy Pelosi on January 6th, but that still hasn't come out. I'd love to see that. Well, what's so, that going to try to come out so they'll never make it? But she got served the other day on the house floor for her <laughs> husband's escapades. <laughs> it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. I think it? it's all organized crime. Every bit of it. I mean, organized crime is, we could, if we, we three got together and decided to run Hoyt's clone, we could be our, our own organized family. We could or, yeah, Rico, Rico, right there, charges right there. <laughs> well, the, the, well, with Pelosi, though, I'll tell you this: the first person that brought her father to light, which is interesting because they own the mer merchandise building in Chicago, is JFK. JFK is the one that finally brought out Pelosi's dad and, the and called him out. Or his brother Robert? No, he he did. John Fitzgerald versus uh, Robert Junior. JFK Jr. Okay, thank you. Or er, so, I'm sorry, JFK Jr., not JFK. But oh, JFK the guy, Jr. the guy um, that went down the plane crash around that yeah. magazine. Yeah, supposedly. Yeah, uh, there was like he's a alive? bunch of. You think he's fog. alive? Because all these QAnon people think he's alive, and that like he's I'm not alive. a QAnon yeah. person. Yeah, I don't he's think dead. he's alive. Same as his wife and yeah. his yeah. friend, their third partner. Thank yeah, he's a piece of work too. So uh, they're Mark all hot stuff. organized crime, every bit of them. And mm -hmm. I and I I'm and by the way, I'm digging on Trump too, and he's not clean. So that's gonna Trump's come out in a different man. show. That's gonna come out on a different show eventually once I get it all Trump's together. A business guy. I mean, hotels, all the hotels. All the hotels. The hotels up in New York, the uh the main one there where he filmed um where they filmed uh Home Alone. Home Alone. Oh wow. Yeah. That Home one Alone. that one has a lot of play. No, 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 no. Here, we could do a show on Hollywood. We could talk oh. about all the crazy, kinky things going on with the tape. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. And, and Roman, we could talk mm -hmm. about that all day. Polanski? That one. Yeah. yeah. Polanski? That's I mean, a whole... Sex... Yeah. You could make a whole podcast on Polanski. <laughs> and he was making sex tapes with his wife. The question yeah. is this. Sharon Tate? Yeah. Sharon yeah. Tate. Yeah. yeah. Dakota the... building? We got freaking... What's her... What's the face? Um... Oh, the baby, um, the scary movie. I just watched it. I always Rosemary watch it. Every, baby. Every, uh, yeah. They were trying to put the truth out there in many ways when it comes to the occult, satanic, luciferian stuff. Oh, who, who directed the oh, Rosemary's uh, baby. Who, who, That's who Sharon Tate's that husband. Sharon Tate's yeah, husband. He did that. Yeah, okay. That's right. That's right. I was thinking of the um, guy that uh, did Eyes Wide Shut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see? And you can actually, we got, well, subject of Frank, didn't we? No, no, no apologies. I like the conversation. You guys mm -hmm. are great hosts. Great no, thank hosts. you, Wayne. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Wayne. And uh, we appreciate it. Real quick, everybody, we have Wayne Klingman on here. He's written all kinds of books on, 
on the mafia. Yeah, I can get some of your books, Wayne. Yeah, definitely. That's yeah. that's awesome. Look at that. Yeah, we, we got we got a movie. We're working on a movie now. Oh, it's been a while before it comes out on the Vegas Skim called the Vegas Skim. I have a cookbook guy of all things too. If you need a guy to play the role of somebody, you know, what I'm saying, you know, that needs to be a guy in front of the, you know. <laughs> I always wanted a death scene. Oh. So if you need somebody to die, call me. I will be great. <laughs> Emily wants to die. I want to die. We can do that. We can do that. I can um, do that. Yeah, can do make, that. Sure, make, sure, make sure. I know this probably <laughs> doesn't have anything to do with I want Milwaukee feel to kill me in his hit. I was going to be the overbearing well, Milwaukee mob wife. Phil, Milwaukee Phil. He was in prison, right? Mike Walker Phil's in prison. He's right. gonna die in prison. He knows that everybody knows it. Yeah. He's married. He has a girlfriend. I need to I need to ride him. I think me and him connect. <laughs> he's he's dead. He's not gonna write you back. Oh, I thought you said he was in prison. He died in prison, but I'm telling oh, the story about Milwaukee. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, I thought he was still alive. I don't know no, much no, about it. Dead. I just know I, I just remember hearing about so the hit car. His girlfriend says, Well, this is relationship is not gonna go anywhere. So if she finds somebody to marry, they get married. Uh. So he's Falk Phil dies. A couple months after Milwaukee Phil's dead, mm -hmm. a group of people come to his her home, knock on the door, they go in the door, they grab the girl's husband, and they kill him. Wow. Why? Because they had the audacity to marry Milwaukee Phil's girlfriend. Oof. Wow. Right. And Milwaukee Phil was never coming out of prison. He was never gonna do that. Did yeah. he have children? Milwaukee Phil or Frank. Milwaukee or, or Frank, either one of Frank them. Frank had two kids, one of them still alive. I met him. Mm -hmm. and he's the only one still alive. The sister died, the brother died. Um, yeah, I met his the living son. Isn't that a good experience? Not a good experience at all. Okay. Mm. I mean, other than I feel some people, yeah, those were nicer, far nicer people, far more entertaining, mm. far more educational. But the living son thinks it's 1965, he's back in the mafia. Yeah, so, oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, he's an little old man. ID, little, you know. He, he's an old man. He's old alive, so it's got to be 80 if he's a day. Oh, okay. He, he likes okay. to be tough. He surrounds himself with people who think he's tough. He likes to threaten people he thinks can't do anything to him. It was my experience mm. with him. Mm. My experience. Interesting. Perhaps if you met him, he'd be take out plunge. Don't know. I just had a horrible one. <laughs> well, I'm going to say, Wayne, thank you so much for coming on the show. You and me will be in touch to yes, the we'll be. for some we have to. a lot of things. No, I'm going to put an E in, in my name, so an E will be silent, right? Silent, yeah. <laughs> and we'll have to, we have to go to, 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 to go to Vegas for a while and do that sort of thing, right? There you go. Um, yeah. Are you are you um, an ordained priest, Will? I'm no, I'm not. Know. I'm not an ordained priest at all, though. No. Why? <laughs> Why would you think that? <laughs> I think you can come to Vegas with us, right? Oh, listen, I'm I'm the guy that looks like an ordained priest, but does worse shit than everybody else. Well, how about that? That's your Halloween costume yeah. next year. Yeah, listen, that's my, my whole life. That's not my Halloween costume. That's been my whole life. Everybody thinks Will is the oh the nice, yeah, the, yeah, I am nice. But I will do some crazy ass shit at the same time. But, you know. See, father, father, will. See that's what, yeah. Going on. yeah, that's me. That's me too. That's why Will and I connect so much because we got that's a right. dark side. That's right. That's why. Yeah. Well. Anyway, so um, I do appreciate you guys having me on your show. I meant Thank you, Wayne. Have the honor to come on this great opportunity to talk yeah. about so many different fun things. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, uh, Wayne. We're gonna let you go. Everybody can follow Wayne over on Twitter. Thank Milwaukee you, Wayne. Mob. To thank, thank you. you so much, Wayne. We'll I'll be in touch with you soon. Thank you. Have a great weekend. You too. Thanks, all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And there we have it, Wayne there Klingman it with a silent E on the end. He's adding that to his name uh, this uh, weekend. So, anyway, I want to say thank you, everybody, for tuning in for the show this evening. I'm sorry I had yes. some technical issues today. Go over to Amazon. You can get all of his books. The links in the description on Amazon. These books are We're really nice. Books. They look nice. They are. They are yeah. very I've, nice. I'm you know. I, I'm going to be reading these here very soon. Um with with this uh, yeah, I have a whole list of books. I have a lot whole list of podcasts. I don't know what you do, Will, but like I It's I, hard I sometimes. On, 
it is very hard to get it all yeah. in. And, yeah. and when you work and you have kids and stuff, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. obviously this is going to be in my mob collection. We appreciate him. Speaking of that, mob month, November, we're keeping it in the family. It's all about the family. We got Joe Gallo next week. Joey Gallo. Joey Gallo. That's the right. daughter of Crazy Joe. Nice. Crazy right. Joe Gallo. So we're going to have her on next week. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate you all. Um, have a wonderful, awesome weekend. Please share the show out. It helps our guests. It helps our show. It helps our network. Yes. We love you all. Thank you, 107.7 FM, New Orleans. We'll see you next time, next Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard.